This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Hey everyone, it's Blackfire. I love weird parts of history, and that includes vehicles. Wartime impulses and problems often led to the creation of some of the most bizarre and unique designs. Occasionally, they're functional and brilliant, but other times, well, they look better on the drawing board. Either way, the creators of War Thunder have brought to life some 1,700 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from a wide variety of eras. For this video, I'm going to look at eight of the absolute weirdest ones. If you're not familiar with War Thunder, it's got everything crammed into one package. Deep tank combat, dogfights, and naval slugfests. It's free to play and available on PC, Xbox One X and S, PS5, and previous console generations. Plus, it supports crossplay across all of those platforms. If you want to check it out, use the link in the description, and you'll also get a premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and a three-day account boost for free. So to kick things off, let's look at one of my all-time favorite strange vehicles, the Neubau Fahrzeug. This German tank had three turrets, one for the two main guns and two others located at the front and at the back. Designed in the mid-1930s, by the time World War II began, the Neubau Fahrzeug was already a fossil. It may have looked good on paper and certainly seemed to offer some offensive capabilities mixed with defensive protection, but by the 1940s it was slow and thinly armored. Only five were built and they fared poorly in combat, most of them being destroyed on the Eastern Front. The last remaining tank met an unsanctimonious and as target practice for the Volkssturm in 1944. Gaijin did a great job modeling the tank in War Thunder, including the well-spaced crew, which actually helps improve its survivability. Next is a truly revolutionary tank, the Swedish Stridsvagen 103. Designed during the early years of the Cold War, this tank employed a number of interesting design features. Among these was the decision to ditch the conventional turret design, giving it a low profile. Another was fixing the gun to the hull of the tank and using the suspension to elevate and depress the cannon. This made firing while moving impractical, but with Sweden expected to be on the defense in a Cold War conflict, it wasn't really seen as a problem. Although the Stritzwagen never saw combat in real life, its maneuverability in War Thunder is impressive, and it's difficult to spot and hit, thanks to that low-profile design. For our third highlight, let's jump to aircraft in the American F-82E Twin Mustang. Certainly a visually memorable aircraft, its strange design actually had practical applications. Essentially sandwiching two P-51s into a single airframe, it critically added more space for fuel, giving it incredible range. It was designed in World War II to escort American bombers in the Pacific and support the invasion of the Japanese home islands, but with the end of the war, it found itself without purpose. The Korean War changed things for the F-82. The fighter was mustered into a combat role where it served well as a fighter and even as a ground attack aircraft before the appearance of enemy jet fighters rendered it obsolete. An F-82 is actually credited with the first American aerial kill of the Korean War, and in War Thunder, the F-82 has two pilots, either of which can fly the airplane if one is incapacitated. Next, let's look at a peculiar boat, the SF-40 Ferry. Perhaps the epitome of ugly but effective, the Siebel Ferry's experience was born out of Hitler's fantasies and the German war machine's supply realities. In 1940, the invasion of Britain seemed inevitable, and Germany needed a way to move troops and equipment across the Channel. Enter Fritz Siebel, a Luftwaffe officer who saw the answer in an improvised watercraft constructed of bridging pontoons. While certainly weird-looking, Siebel ferries were easy to transport and construct, seaworthy, and formed a solid gun platform. Even after Operation Sea Line was called off, Siebel ferries served effectively as transport and mobile flak batteries. In War Thunder, there are two versions of the Siebel ferry, the SF-40 Light, equipped with four quad AA mounts, and the SF-40 Heavy, boasting four 
88 millimeter guns. Both are incredibly slow, but they are lethal when they're employed effectively. Another unique vehicle is the Australian Boomerang Fighter from World War II. It's not unconventional in its appearance, but its development is an incredible exercise in working with what's available. With Imperial Japan on its doorstep and no assistance on the horizon, Australia had to come up with a viable fighter fast. It had the tooling and license for the NA-16 trainer and the Pratt & Whitney Twin Wasp engine. In just a few months, designers married the two into what would become the stopgap CA-12 Boomerang. This fighter was slower than its contemporaries, but was maneuverable, well-armed, and well-armored. This led to its extensive employment in ground attack roles, where it found significant success. Although an Australian fighter, the Boomerang can be found under the British tech tree in War Thunder. Sixth is the only helicopter on my list, the H-34. As part of the French tech tree, this helicopter from the 1950s was employed in a number of roles. Nicknamed Pirate, French forces transformed the bulky and somewhat goofy-looking unarmed transport into an unlikely combat helicopter. In War Thunder, the CH-34 can carry both bombs and machine guns, as well as guided and dumb missiles. Personally, I think that missile rack is precariously close to the landing gear, but this didn't stop the Pirate from achieving success in the Algerian War, where it helped pioneer air mobile warfare tactics. Next is the Japanese J7W1 Shinden. The only true prototype on my list, the J7W1 was built in the final months of World War II and was intended as an interceptor fighter to counter American bombers. It had an uncommon design for the time, featuring a canard and a pusher configuration. This gives it an odd look compared to most of its contemporaries, except for maybe the American XP-55, which also happens to appear in War Thunder. Only three test flights were made, and the end of the war in 1945 brought an end to the aircraft's development. Equipped with four 30mm cannons, the J-7W1 excels at dive attacks, particularly against bombers in War Thunder. Lastly is something that probably belongs in a museum when it was developed. It's the French F-222.2. Despite an uncanny resemblance to a bus, this bomber actually saw service in World War II. Equipped with four engines and a pusher-puller configuration, the aircraft could carry over 2,200 kilograms of bombs. It was actually the first Allied aircraft to drop bombs on Berlin and was even used by a French pilot to escape to Britain with several other airmen during the fall of France. Although outclassed by its contemporaries in real life, the F-222.2 in War Thunder is a bullet sponge, and it's capable of dealing massive destruction against ground units. It also has three turrets for defense against fighters. Overall, War Thunder does an incredible job of bringing these vehicles to life. From accurate crew positions to detailed damage models, developers really did a great job showcasing their quirks as well as their strengths and weaknesses in a remarkable way. And remember, these are just some of my favorites. There are hundreds of vehicles to choose from, and yes, there are some other weird ones. If you want to check them out, give War Thunder a go using the link in the video description. You'll also get that bonus as well. So, join over 34 million players worldwide across dozens of battlefields, including dynamic historical campaigns. War Thunder also gets regular updates, which add new vehicles, maps, and more. And it's all free! If you're already a War Thunder player, tell me your favorite weird vehicles from the game in the comments. I would love to give them a try. And again, thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and make sure to subscribe. Tap the bell to get notified of all future content. Before I go, just quickly want to say thank you all for your support. I wouldn't be able to do this without you, so sincerely, thanks for watching.